G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. For once again, I'm gonna be doing a weekly tips video. I don't know how many more of these I'm gonna realistically be able to do once we go to pretty much daily games between, uh, was it like rounds nine to 12? I'm gonna have to really rethink the format on that. I nearly didn't get this video out at all this week because I have been moving house. As you can see, this is a new set. You can kind of see my bed in the background partially moved in. Uh, so this video nearly didn't happen, but uh, you know, it's Thursday night, it's not quite too late just yet. I will of course be pretty much releasing this during the first game of the round, Gold Coast and the Bulldogs, but uh, you're just gonna have to believe me that I'm going to be doing my tip before the game starts. As usual guys, I'm gonna take you through who's winning the Fantasy League. It is actually a new leader this week, a guy called Dion Billington. Dion has taken top spot with a, a score of 16.83 last week, which is monstrous, and his average is 16.26. So he takes the lead from Taz Wood, who I think has dropped down to third. We also have a new leader in the footy tipping. I believe, was it Sean Pro was leading last round, I think. It is now Mikey EJC, who got eight last round um, with a margin of 14, taking them to 45. And the actual winner last week was JRW Lions Winder, and it's cut off the rest of the name. But uh, that person scored eight with a margin of 14. So well done, everyone's killing it. I think I got five last week. I got Geelong wrong against Collingwood. I don't know why I tipped them. It was pretty much off a gut feel. Essendon really let me down against the Bulldogs. And GWS also fell to the Lions, who are in a bit of good form at the moment. And Hawthorne inexplicably got belted as well. So those were the four I got wrong last week. I'm hoping for a better run this round. Before I get into the tipping, uh, guys, I just gotta let you know about a couple things. I'm going to be starting a new podcast. That's right, it's like the third podcast I've done uh, with my roommate, Dylan. It's gonna be called Cool World. I'm gonna leave the link in the description. If you could go subscribe to that channel, we're gonna start doing pretty regular the podcast especially now we live together uh, going forward it's gonna be non footy related and um, it's just gonna be you know talking about things sort of like in the no meat on the cleat sort of vibe and also you know just have guests on as well so would really appreciate if you guys got behind that little project I'm also pleased to say we will be returning to the old school kind of podcast with just me and Bush uh, probably in the next couple of weeks we got a little bit on the horizon in terms of um, growing the channel some exciting opportunity has come up I'm gonna be as vague as that for the time being so once that sort of starts to make momentum um, we'll be doing that podcast quite a bit more regularly but anyway guys that is enough waffling let's get into this round's tips we're gonna start off with the Gold Coast and the Bulldogs again by the time you're watching this game's probably finished or halfway finished uh, it's at Metricon Stadium and of course the teams have actually been announced so I might even this is so rare that I actually get to do this video and the teams have been announced so I'll see if there's anything juicy Gold Coast obviously last week um, were pretty good in Sydney, beat the Swans, although that's kind of a game. You, They should really be expecting to win each week if they're going to be taking the next step. And the Bulldogs inexplicably slash, smashed Essendon. They're, they're a little, they're a real Jekyll and Hyde side. Both of the Bulldogs and the Bombers are really hard to predict week in, week out at the moment. The Bombers were sitting like top four before that game. Yeah, just didn't show up and the Bulldogs smashed them. Not too dissimilarly to how last year went. If you remember, they beat them by about 100 points. Obviously, it wasn't quite as bad as that. Uh, but yeah, pretty pretty weird result, I thought. The two changes, Gowers and Porter in for Dale and Lockie Hunter getting managed. And that's another that's another consideration we're going to have to think of, both in, from fantasy perspective and also just you know footy tipping. A lot more players are going to have to get managed because they're going to be playing through, you know... Um, more games in less time, basically. I'm going to put my tip in. I actually think the Bulldogs will replicate their good form and they'll beat the Suns by 14 points tonight. GWS versus Richmond. This is another really tough game to tip. Toby Green and Sam Jacobs back into the side with Daniel Lloyd. They've dropped Haitley, Hill, and uh, Shane Muffins injured. And Nash replaces Caddy for the visitors. The Tigers have been in much better form than the Giants. Who did the Giants lose to last week? No, well, they lost at home to Brisbane. That's right. Really unpredictable form from then. But I don't know. Has Richmond ever actually beaten the Giants in Sydney? I don't know if they have. If they have, it hasn't been for a long time. They generally have had a few heartbreaking losses there, even during their good period lately as well. And the Giants are languishing down in 13th. It's a bit of a miss, must win for the Giants. To go 3-5 and five would put them in a bit of danger. Probably almost puts them it'll be very very tough for them to make the top four having lost five games after eight rounds this is a generally tough one to tip richmond are by far better on form 
GWS are good at home. I think I'm going to tip the Giants because surely, surely they won't let their season go to rot already. I'll tip them by two goals in a close game. North Melbourne versus Carlton. This one's a little bit simpler. 12 months ago, I would have said definitely North Melbourne every day of the week, but the form line they're in at the moment, Carlton, heartbreaking loss to power, the power last week, uh, and the power obviously top of the ladder and you know not doing too much wrong at the moment. And the Blues are really starting to make momentum with their rebuild. They're really starting to charge up the ladder, putting in consistent performances, the performances we were sort of expecting and we started to see at the second half of last year. To lose last week would have been an absolute heartbreak. It was probably one or two bad decisions um, by players, not the umpires, that cost them the game. And um, they would be sitting, you know, they'd probably be sitting close to the eight had they won that game. In fact, I think they would be in it. They're doing a lot of things right and North on the... Other hand, got pumped by Richmond last week, who aren't even playing that like consistently well at the moment. I don't think North are as bad as what people are suggesting. There's a lot of talk about you know trading Ben Brown. I think that's the dumbest thing you could possibly do. I think it's probably just media build up. Um, I think that, I mean they beat GWS in Sydney not that long ago. I think we need to give them a break. They're probably just playing some shit footy. They've made four changes: Jed Anderson, Davies Uniac, Larky, and Zerha in for Bonner, Williams, Wood, and Zebel. So. Losing Zebel out hurts. Look, I'm just gonna have to go with the form line. Carlton, I'm pretty comfortable uh, going to. I'm pretty comfortable in saying they're gonna win this by mm, four goals. Next up, you've got Sydney and Hawthorne, a couple of sides that are coming off pretty disappointing losses. I guess the Suns uh, are in good form, but I guess losing a home game to them for the Swans, who are obviously gonna be trying to avoid the bottom four, bit of a missed opportunity. But then again, you know Heaney's out for the year, Kennedy's out for the year. Their focus on trying to win games might be just starting to shift. I'm not using that as an excuse, but they're two and five. And with those stars out, I think now it's almost a time where they could just focus on developing that next layer of talent at the Swans, which I think they've got plenty of. What I'm trying to say is they're looking more and more like a lock for the bottom four. And they come up against the Hawthorne side who's playing horrible football at the moment. They look like top four side, a top four side one week and then a bottom four side the next in some instances instances rather. Hawthorne's last three were 43 point loss to the D's, a five goal loss to the Pies, and then a six goal loss to the Giants who aren't in any real good form at the moment either. Um, And before that, they had that game against North where they got way in front and nearly dropped it in the dying minutes. But before that, they beat Richmond. So again, a side that's probably not playing as well as I think we know they can. I think the SUG is a pretty happy hunting ground for them. They are pretty good at winning away against the Swans. Look, I'm going to say surely the Hawks snap out of it this week and they get the job done against an undermanned and young Sydney side. I'll tip them to win by 18 points. Next up, we have got the Power and St. Kilda at Adelaide Oval, so a true home game for the Power now against uh, the Saints, who I think was it, was it their first win at Adelaide Oval or at least their first win at Adelaide Oval against Adelaide last week. So obviously not a great travelling side, the Saints. Uh, they find themselves in 4-3 and three after that win. They sort of responded after a really disappointing performance against Fremantle where they, they won. Uh, sorry, they smashed them in the first quarter. The game was virtually won and they let it slip. And that's the second time that they've done that this year. So they'll be kicking themselves. Now, the power are pretty buoyed at the moment. They're 6-1, and one, not doing a lot wrong. To be honest, it's hard to see them losing this one and not being 7-1, and one, in which case you think they're pretty much a lock for finals already, playing some really good football. It will be an interesting battle this week between Laddams and guys like Rowan Marshall and Paddy Ryder because uh, Laddams is really starting to make his mark after a good performance last week. Dan Houston's playing good football, at least for my fantasy team. And Charlie Dixon's probably one of the best key forwards in the comp this season on form so far. Look... I just think the power are a better side. I think they'll win this game by, let's say, 24 points. You're going to reduce the margin a little bit for short and quarters. This is an interesting one. The Crows suck. They're 0-7, percentage of 55.5%, lost by four goals to the Saints. Everything is kind of going wrong for them at the moment. But they are coming up against an Essendon side who are good. I think there's no doubt about that. And they've played one less game. It's amazing to see on this live ladder here, they're they're 4-2 and 12th. That is nuts. Um, of course, they've played one less. So, yeah. The Crows really sort of screaming out for some leaders, some on-field direction. They've uh, they've named an extended bench. Obviously, this is a Sunday game. And Bryce Gibbs has been named along with Atkins, Himmelberg, and Lockie Murphy. And the Bombers, obviously, just maybe are they vulnerable right now? Who knows? Because they're just that performance last week was surprising. 
And Essendon do do this thing where they just slump every now and then. And it's really just for one week at a time. That being said, it seems like it's hard to imagine them going down to the Crows at the moment who are just playing some pretty average football. I guess one bright side for the Crows at the moment is that they recruit Ben Keyes. is actually playing some good football. I think he had his best game for the club with a goal and 23 possessions last week. They really need to sort of continue to develop and nurture that kind of talent. But at the moment, I just think they still need to draft a lot of the, the kids that, they're going, that are going to take them forward anyway. They're a rough spot right now. I can't see them winning this game, even against an Essendon side maybe low on confidence. I'll, I'll tip a close-ish game, shall I? I'll say 11, oh, 10 points then. The Eagles and Collingwood, this is a real toughie. The Pies, as far as I'm concerned, probably my favorite to win the flag. Um, and I did tip against them last week against uh, against the Cats, and they proved me wrong, even though I have been sort of spruiking them up. To go out for the regular, ho- yeah, the home and away season from now, uh, that is a blow, particularly, you know, because they're a side that doesn't necessarily have that much forward power. Um, and they sort of rely on these good medium types like Stevenson, Majacek, and Dugowie to find avenues to go. And so with him out, that actually does hurt them. They're coming against an Eagles side who are slowly, slowly building. They were horrible. Looked like every bit of bottom four side at the start of the season and now are starting to return and getting better and sort of more like themselves every week. If the Eagles are going to win this week, it's going to take their best performance of the year. I think Collingwood are a better side, but... And I know I'm, I'm an Eagles fan, but I've just got a funny feeling the Eagles are just going to pull one out this week and upset the Pies. They're going to rise to the occasion, as this Eagles side often does, and then drops games you think they shouldn't. I can hear people hating this. Call me biased, whatever. It's me that's going to get the tip wrong if I'm wrong. i just got a funny feeling the Eagles are going to pull out a 15-point win and surprise everyone. I say surprise everyone. I think 58% of people on the app tipped the Eagles. Um... So yeah. Next up, you've got the Lions playing an away game in Queensland against the D's at Metricon Stadium, which is an interesting one. The D's have pretty much given us no real reason to back them in this year until last week where they thumped Hawthorne. Obviously, Hawks are out of form at the moment, but at least this will give the D's some confidence. They're 3-3 three and three with a percentage of 101, having played one less game, sort of like Essendon. The latter makes them look a bit worse than they actually are. They're still pretty hard to get a read on. But that was by far the most convincing performance of the year. And uh, Petraka, tell you what, as, as a player that's really announced himself, he really te- teased us in the preseason, and he's starting to put it together. I don't believe, uh, who was it, Shane Crawford that said he's gone past Dusty as the number one player in the comp. I think that is a little absurd to say that at this point, but he is starting to become the player I think we knew he would when he was drafted at pick two. The Lions are 5-2, and two, second on the ladder at 118%. They haven't done too much wrong this week, and a good win last week against the Giants in Sydney shows that they can travel and win, even if they're not going to have to travel too far this season. I do just think this is a good opportunity for Melbourne to really sort of put their, put their claim on this season and really announce themselves as a real finals contender. But I just think the Lions are too good a side. Uh, they've been playing good football. Lockie Neal's in unreal form. They're playing well as, as a whole unit, to be honest. So I'm going to tip the Lions to win this by about four goals. And now we're up to the final game of the round, and this one is fairly simple. I've been talking up Fremantle, well, not so much talking them up, but sort of being a defender of them, saying, you know, they're not going so bad. Their talent is better than what people think. And while that's true, they're starting to buckle under that injury pressure. They were pretty good against the Eagles. When I watched, I, I sort of watched half of the game because I was at work. But there were times where I was just like, geez, these Dockers are actually all over us. But they just keep getting injuries to key players. And while that keeps happening, I find it very, very hard to back them in. Matt Tabiner was probably their best on ground. He's Bush's least favorite player. But uh, at least in the first half, he was proving uh, too good for Tom Barras. They did beat the Cats last year, if I'm not mistaken, but I just can't see it happening again, even though the Cats do have their injury woes. Obviously, the Ablett's out. Um, I think Joel Selwood is out, isn't he? Let me just check the teams to confirm that. I know he got injured, but I just want to make sure he's actually not named. Oh, of course, yeah. The teams haven't been announced. Yes, no. So Joel Selwood um, is a safe assumption. He's not playing. They've got a few injury concerns. That being said, having... Been in Perth a week. They don't have that real travel factor. They've played on the ground a week ago. And frankly, they're just a far better side than Fremantle. I'm going to tip the Cats to win by about 25 points again. All right, guys, let's whip through the ladder real quick. And uh, Port Adelaide still hold top spot with a win over St. Kilda. Brisbane are second. And Geelong and West Coast round out the top four. So that is bizarre. That uh, that makes me look like a biased prick. But 
I think the Eagles are obviously just going to have a little period now where they've got some home games and it's a chance to inflate their ladder position at the moment. I don't think they're the fourth best side in the comp at the moment, but look, if they beat Collingwood, we'll probably have to accept that they are more or less back to where they were. The Bulldogs, Essendon, Collingwood, and Richmond make up that top eight. And that top eight's looking more and more settled at the moment. It's hard to imagine any of those sides, with the exception of maybe the Bulldogs and Essendon, falling out of that top eight. Although at the moment, I'd probably bet both of those sides will make it. Carlton, St. Kilda, Gold Coast, and GWS make up the unlucky lot who sit just outside the eight at the end of this round. Hawthorne still 13th. Melbourne still 14th with a game in hand. And Fremantle, Sydney, North, and Adelaide shaping as our bottom four, and as that that really looks like it's almost a lock in itself, with the D's looking like a better side than those teams below them. At 0 and 8 and 59%, it is hard to imagine any side taking the wooden spoon from Adelaide this year. Anyway, guys, that was my best attempt at a tips video. Hope you enjoyed it. I must admit, it is not my best effort because my life is crazy right now and I just moved house, but um, back me in. Get around the pod, the Cool World podcast, and things will be back to normal very soon. Appreciate your support, and I will see you all in the next video. Cheers.